Hiya. Um, today I'd like to talk about what you can expect in vinyasa yoga. So I often get asked this question, um, particularly from beginners or those that are a bit newer to yoga, um, trying to understand perhaps the different styles of yoga about um, what exactly is vinyasa yoga, where does it come from, and if you do the practice, what, you know, what, what things can you expect during class? Um, so I'd like to really focus on that during today's video. I'm Irene, a yoga and mindfulness teacher. And through this Antara Yoga YouTube channel, I share various different yoga, breathing and mindfulness practices. Um, if you're enjoying this video or you would like to see other videos that I may do, subscribe to the channel and uh, give this video a thumbs up. Um, so let's start by jumping into the definition. So what is vinyasa yoga? What does vinyasa yoga actually mean? Um, vinyasa yoga has several different meanings. The name vinyasa um, comes from Sanskrit, which is the old Indian language where um, tr traditionally where um, yoga came from. Vinyasa literally means linking breath with movement. So the idea in a vinyasa class is it's dynamic, there's a lot of movement, and you're really guided um, to see if you can link every movement that you make with a um, intentional breath. So this is often also when people start to ask, okay, what's the difference between yoga and perhaps other sports. And I, my answer is always about this, this quality with the focus on the breath. So we're really intentionally following the guidance of our breath rather than our mind trying to push us perhaps into um, challenging postures. So, we're, And we're really listening to our breath to give us that guidance of where is that boundary of what is uh, a good place to work. Another definition of vinyasa means one followed by the other. So also when you're looking at a vinyasa practice, there are many asanas, so asana means yoga pose, that are followed uh, together through linked through a series of movements. And this is also um, a nice way to describe, okay, how is vinyasa perhaps different to, to other styles of yoga? It's that idea that every movement is linked dynamically through the breath. And often there'll be different vinyasa sequences that you might you might come across when you're practicing. So it often happens when you're practicing vinyasa that you will be um, perhaps practicing some of the same poses, um, but they'll be linked in a different way. And often perhaps you may have a different theme that you're following um, to support that. So as you use and listen to your breath during vinyasa yoga, the idea is that you're not just dynamically moving in and out of poses all the time, but you'll also often be then pausing in a pose, so perhaps a guidance of around five breaths, where you really get that time to explore on a slightly deeper level the pose. So there's this element of movement, and then there's this perhaps um, also moments of stillness um, that can be found uh, within the practice. Um, something else that makes vinyasa yoga quite unique, um, along with, I guess, ashtanga yoga, is this idea that um, there's really a balance being found between flexibility, strength, and balance. So the different yoga poses that you'll come across um, are going to really focus not just on flexibility, which is often seen as, um, you know, the, traditionally yoga makes you flexible, but there's also a lot of elements of cultivating strength and, and of course, balance within the, the body, but also physical uh, balance. So we'll be experimenting with placing different parts of the body on the, the floor and um, from that trying to find an internal uh, balance and concentration. So the next thing I'd like to cover is about what is the um, history of vinyasa yoga? Where does it come from? What is the, the, what's the origin story? So as you probably know, um, uh, Vinyasa yoga is a style of, of Hatha yoga. So Hatha yoga is the umbrella 
of physical uh, yoga practices. And they really have a tradition coming back from um, India. So a long history um, where there has been this combination of practicing um, uh, movement or asana, which is the, what most people think of as the, the physical yoga, but then also um, meditation where you tend to sit in stillness and um, pranayama practices. So really focusing on, on the breath, as well as a whole series of lifestyle uh, choices. So this kind of package is what's known as the, the eight limbs of yoga following the, the Hatha yoga uh, tradition. Vinyasa yoga as a style and as a branch can really be linked back um, to Krishnamacharya. So Krishnamacharya was a teacher um, in India that was around um, from the beginning of the, the 1900s, really up to the, the end of the 1900s. And he is by many seen as the, the father or grandfather of um, modern yoga. So he himself um, taught some very influential um, yoga teachers such as Iyengar, such as Batabi Joyce. And these teachers really um, got many students then coming from, from all over the world. And they really sort of made popular, you could say, the um, dynamic, more active uh, forms of yoga. So Patabi Joyce is very famous for Ashtanga yoga, which is moving dynamically um, through sequences, but really using um, set sequences. And Iyengar that's kind of coming from the other branch, both from um, Krishnamacharya, but Iyengar is much more focused on kind of alignment and using props and, you know, really breaking down the pose into different elements. And what you can see for a vinyasa is it kind of came from, from these two um, lineages and all linking back to, to Krishnamacharya. So that's, I think, always important to, to understand where something came from and to, you know, to give that tribute. Um, and if you want to, to, you know, to learn more, then certainly have a search uh, for Krishnamacharya and um, you'll get to hear he's got some very interesting uh, stories and ha had quite interesting teacher himself. So one of the things personally I really like about Krishnamacharya's teachings is his personal approach. So he did believe a lot in using set sequences and helping people to not just choose the yoga poses they like, but also make sure it's well-rounded and, um, you know, a balanced practice. Um, but he really took this approach of personalizing practice for each individual's needs. And I think that's a really beautiful thing, actually, to really um, have this idea of personalizing and giving people um, uh, practices based on, the, on their needs. Um, this is something where you have a lot more room if you're working one-on-one -on -one with private students, um, but there's a bit less room for that, of course, in, in the group class setting. But I, think, I felt it was worth mentioning that, um, yeah, that that was really a, a key principle of, of his teachings. So you've now had the chance to learn a little bit more about uh, the origins of vinyasa yoga and, the, the, you know, hearing a bit of a description of what vinyasa yoga is. Why, if you're not convinced yet, should you, should you give vinyasa yoga a try? So as I mentioned already, um, vinyasa yoga really helps the, the balance, the strength and um, flexibility of the body. So it's working of course, on a, on a muscular level, but also um, on your bone density. It helps with connective tissue. Um, and it can really help also in the, the process of aging. Then if you start looking at yoga on a slightly deeper level, so going perhaps a bit more away from the, the physical body and a bit more subtly into the breath and um, into the mind, then um, we also start to see benefits of, um, you know, vinyasa yoga. So there is this real idea of um, being able to improve your breath capacity. We really focus on lengthening and deepening the inhale and exhale through a whole series of movements. And this can um, help not only increase your breathing whilst you're doing yoga, but to also be supportive um, of your breathing patterns throughout uh, daily life. And the other thing which can be quite nice is that the 
um, on a more subtle level, as you focus your concentration on a specific point, so you're perhaps you're keeping your focus with the eyes, there's an intention to keep watching your breath and your body throughout the, the practice, as well as um, uh, sitting in quiet and, um, you know, practicing meditation at the beginning and at the end of, of um, your practice. This can be really supportive to start to build the concentration to help calm the mind and to start um, really finding those benefits uh, from meditation. So as you start to then practice vinyasa yoga um, on a more regular basis, you can start to perhaps not just feel more relaxed or um, start to become less stressed, but you can start on a deeper level to really um, get connected with your inner dialogue and um, start to see how perhaps patterns um, uh, that are showing up in your yoga practice um, may also be showing up in your life and perhaps looking at um, how you might want to, to address that. So the next question, can beginners practice vinyasa yoga? So this is a question I hear a lot, um, and I think the reason it's asked quite frequently is because of the idea that in vinyasa yoga you are flowing, um, sometimes quite a, say, you know, a, a relatively fast pace through different poses, and that can feel challenging, of course, to begin with when you're not familiar with the poses themselves. So you might find yourself, if you're practicing either at home or able to go to a class, that you're getting most of it, but sometimes you're looking around, you're not quite sure if the body's in the right place. Um, and this is a really personal um, yeah, decision of whether vinyasa yoga is for you. I would suggest for beginners to find a style of yoga that you enjoy. So if you enjoy being surprised by which pose is going to come next, if you enjoy that slight more active uh, style of yoga, then just go for vinyasa yoga. As you begin to practice it more times, you'll begin to get more familiar with the poses. And that way it will start to become a little easier. And as you begin to get more familiar with the uh, poses, you'll have a little bit more um, capacity to also think about the alignment of the pose or your breath or, um, you know, other more subtle aspects around the practice. Equally, if you're someone that really likes to focus first on the detail and you would prefer to first get comfortable with the poses at a slower pace, Perhaps, um, a, you know, a regular vinyasa flow isn't for you right now. And then you might choose to either go at a slightly slower pace in a slow flow yoga or in a hatha class where really there's more time spent looking at the fundamentals. Um, or equally try a vinyasa beginners class. There's plenty of those around as well. And that way you get to um, have a bit more explanation and time to explore a pose, but at the same time also get that opportunity to move the body dynamically, which can also be a great way uh, to connect with your breath. And now finally, coming back to the original question, so what to expect in vinyasa yoga? And I think probably if you were searching for this, your question is really coming about what to expect if you join a vinyasa class. Now, the, you can really see the whole of a vinyasa class like a, the curve of a wave. So there's this gentle sort of stillness at the beginning. As then you start to slowly grow, we start to slowly begin to move and uh, warm up the body and we'll begin with slightly smaller um, movements. So you kind of start to go a little bit up that wave. And then at the top, we're kind of working a bit more with intensity. So we might be working through some active sun salutations. There may be um, various standing poses that we're um, practicing. And then once we're kind of reaching that top of the wave, we may be kind of putting everything that we've been doing so far together towards a, um, you know, a peak pose or a, a peak point where the, the heart rate is also slightly raised. 
And then we start to come down very slowly out of that um, wave. So we might start to move towards some hip opener poses, some nice seated poses. We might start to flow slowly down towards um, perhaps inversions, um, lying down poses, so gentle twists. And um, finally, we come to that bottom of the wave where we come again to, to the stillness. Um, depending on the length of your vinyasa um, practice um, and the teacher and the, the, the style, that um, the way that that looks may be slightly different, but there, there generally seems to be that kind of pace of starting in stillness, slowly building up, building the heat, building um, that intensity in the, in the breath and the movement, and then slowly, slowly coming back down until we come back finally to that um, point of quiet and stillness. So I feel that now um, I've talked enough about yoga <laughs> and the next step for you really is to, to try it out. Um, so there's this very famous um, quote around the, the idea of yoga that 99% of yoga is really coming from direct practice and just that 1% of coming from theory. So I would suggest really try out um, some vinyasa yoga. I'll add in the comments um, a couple of the classes on my channel that you might find interesting. Um, and yeah, let me know how you get on. Um, also, if there's still questions that you might have um, or suggestions, do let me know in the comments. Um, like the video if you found it useful and subscribe to my channel to find more about yoga, breathing and meditation. Thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.